Thank you, Jesus. What gift of grace is Jesus our Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can see. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Ooh. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, and all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yeah, not I, but through Christ in me. It's time for today's message. We're in part five of our sermon series, The Playlist for a Good Life. We've been working our way through the 23rd Psalm, verse by verse, and today we're going to focus in on verse number five. Well, the 23rd Psalm was written by King David. You know that. It was written in his older age and is a six-verse summary of his spiritual journey, and quite a journey it was for King David. He's comparing God's loving kindness toward him to that of a shepherd caring for his sheep. Now, you have to to really love sheep, to do what a shepherd does to ensure that they are properly led, properly fed, and properly protected. And so David is proclaiming that everything he needed, thought he might need, didn't know he needed, but God anyway, the Lord provided. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters. David is saying that when he was lost physically, emotionally, spiritually, the Lord responded to his cry for help and not only led him to repent, but brought him back, reset the relationship, allowed a do-over. David put it this way, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. David is saying in those moments of deep darkness when fear and doubt and distrust, distrust and discouragement could have paralyzed his progress, the Lord walked him through that valley of deep darkness. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So one of the points I made in part four of this series was that nobody, Nobody would want to find themselves in the valley of deep darkness. Nobody would choose to go through a valley of shadow of death. 
But if you find yourself there, you need to believe that the Lord has a good reason for taking that route or allowing that route, and then hold on to the promise that there is something much better waiting on the other side. And that takes us to verse 5 today, where the table is set, there's no need to fret, and experience awaits that you will not forget. Let's look at Psalm 23, the fifth verse. It reads as follows. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So one of the things that I've learned during the course of this series is that for about nine months out of the year, the green pastures that David refers to in Psalm 23 are not very green, not for nine months out of the year. For the most part, the tall green grass opportunities in and around Palestine are only available during the summer months, about three months. In fact, they're located in what's called mesas or tablelands. Here are a few photographs. These tablelands are located in the high mountain country of Palestine. Now this would be prime grazing real estate for a, a shepherd and his sheep, but they're not easy to get to. So what happens is that before the snow melts, the shepherd is going to go ahead of his flock and map out a route for his sheep. He's also going to do a couple of other things. He's going to clear out debris and hazards. Uh, he's going to uh, dig up uh, poisonous plants. He's going to clean out watering holes or wells. He may even dig new ones. He might even put out salt and minerals uh, all over the uh, land there in specific spots to make sure that his sheep are, uh, have the proper nutrients. And if there are some obvious hiding places for wolves and other predators, he's going to do his best to eliminate them or at least make sure his sheep stay away from those areas. What he is in fact doing is preparing a place for his sheep in anticipation of their arrival. And so in verse 5 of Psalm 23, David is simply declaring that just as a shepherd would pave the way, go ahead uh, to uh, ensure the good success of his sheep, so does the Lord do for him. So does the Lord do for us. Our Lord prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Ashford, the Lord wants us to be more excited about the place he's prepared for us than for us to focus on the dark, deep valleys that we may be walking through. David says that, you know what? I can stand around and I can pig out on the fear and confusion of the moment, or I can sit down and feast on this buffet of grace that the Lord has prepared for me. And that's what I'm going to do. In fact, David would say in Psalm 34 and 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. In John 14, Jesus tells his disciples that he is going away to prepare a place for them. He says, in my father's house are many mansions and that he's going to come back and he's going to get them and that whatever they do, do not fret, do not worry, do not be overly concerned. Believe what I have told you. Trust in me. Jesus knew that the journey to his father's house with many mansions involved crossing some very treacherous territory. It would involve some pain and suffering on the cross. And there was no need to put his sheep, us, his people, his followers, his disciples. Uh, there was no need in them doing all of that. He would endure it so they would not, so we would not have to. The resurrection of Jesus Christ set the table for those who believe and are ready to feast on his promise to be with us always. Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Drink, this is uh, the, my blood that represents the new covenant shed just for you. The table is set. Jesus Christ has set the table for us. You know, I used to love rabbit. I really did. I mean, when I was a little boy, I loved rabbit. And my goodness, the way my grandmother would make it, uh, she would cook it, uh, you know, th this cast iron skillet gravy smothered. Oh, it was absolutely delicious. I used to love rabbit until I found out it was rabbit. They told me I was eating chicken. 
They told oh, I'm scarred for life. I've been scarred for life now. I thought I was eating chicken. And once I found out I was eating chicken, I didn't want anything to do with any chicken tasting rabbit. But now that's not a problem for some people. If it's good, they'll eat it. They really don't care what it is. Not the case for me. I want to know exactly what I am eating. You know what? I believe the Lord wants us to know what we are eating. He doesn't want us sitting at the table talking about, oh, Lord, this sure is good. It's tasty. What is it? No, don't tell me. Lord, I don't want to know. Uh, you know what? If you made it, I know it's good. I don't want to concern myself with what it is. I'm just going to eat it, eat it, eat it. I don't believe that's the case. I believe the Lord wants us to know. Yes, he wants us at his table, but he wants us to know exactly what we are feasting on. I believe that if God is serving you peace in a time of turmoil, he wants you to know what you're eating. If God is serving you hope in a time of depression, he wants you to know exactly what you're eating. If God is serving you joy amid chaos, he wants you to know exactly what you're eating. If God is serving you abundance in a time of lack, he wants you to know exactly what you are eating. If God is serving you boldness and courage in a time of fear, he wants you to know exactly what you are eating. I believe there are certain times in un certain situations that the Lord has specific things he wants us to feast on and he wants us to know exactly what we are eating. Lord, in this moment, in these moments of deep darkness, what is it you want me to eat? Where am I deficient, Lord? Am I low on hope? If I am, Lord, feed me hopefulness. If I'm low on, uh, high on anxiety, Lord, feed me something to calm me. Feed me peace. If I, I have integrity issues, Lord, please feed me morality. Feed me your word. In these moments, Lord, what are you calling me to eat so that I become what you've already said that I am? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The table is set. There's no need to fret. In fact, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So here's another fun fact I've learned about sheep. Do you know that one of the worst enemies for sheep are nose flies? Did you know that? Nose flies, nose flies, because here's what happens. They will um, get up in a sheep's nose, they will lay eggs, and then when the larvae hatch, they will work their way further up the nasal passage. They will dig in and can eventually end up in a sheep's brain. In fact, it's so painful, it's so aggravating that sheep will actually go to banging their heads against anything trying to get rid of those nose flies, that larva that is now embedded in their head. If they cannot, sometimes the sheep will literally die from self-inflicted head wounds. So what happens? Each day, the shepherd will pour some oil on the sheep's nose so that the flies slide out instead of flying in. Do you ever think about the things that try to light on us and irritate us on a daily basis? Do you ever think about that? The thoughts, the temptations buzzing around our heads each and every day. What happens when those thoughts and temptations get wedged into our lives? They get up in us. Then we will go to beating our heads against the wall in anger, in fear, in doubt, in confusion, in chaos, in sin. But like a good shepherd, Jesus promised that if we would come to him, we would seek his face, that he would anoint us our heads. He would anoint us with oil, the oil of peace, the oil of hope, the oil of joy, the oil of patience. Romans 10, 17, Paul says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more uh, oil uh, or God's word that's poured on us, the greater our faith becomes. And here's something else that oil does for sheep. It takes the edge off of head butting. That's right. Sheep, especially rams, like to butt 
heads with one another. I'm sure you've seen videos. It's a way that they gain position. It's how they uh, assert their authority, especially during mating season. So what a shepherd does is he doesn't want his sheep injured. And so he will pour oil on the sheep's head so that when they butt heads, it doesn't stick. They glance off. And some of us could use more oil because we love to butt heads. I know people who just want to butt heads all day and all night. It's hard to avoid disagreements. I get it. They, it it's, it's, it's difficult. We disagree. But when we pray with one another, it's like pouring oil over our heads. We learn to disagree agreeably, and we don't cause lasting pain. 2 Timothy 2, 22 through 25 says, But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. You know, one of the things I learned coming up, I heard coming up, and believed it initially, and I'm sure the same for you, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never harm you. Well, that's a half truth, because yes, sticks and stones do break bones, and words do harm. Words do harm. So we need to be more careful about what we say to each other, what we do to each other. Stop all this head bump bumping and rely on the anointed oil that's on us, the word of God, to do what God said to do in the way God said to do it. And then David says, my cup runs over. My cup runs over. You know, shepherds do not go up to these tablelands just to do enough to get by. I mean, think about it. It, it, it's, it. It's a treacherous journey. You don't go up there and just spend five or 10 minutes doing a few things and leave. No, you do what you need to do to prepare a place of abundance and overflow. And so when David says, my cup runs over, David is referring to the continual outpouring of God's faithfulness in his life. Ashford, God's supply far exceeds our needs. God has more supplies than we have needs, and I know we can be needy, but here's the deal. God does not give us drip drops of mercy. He pours out mercy. He doesn't nickel and dime us with his grace. He pours out his grace exceedingly, abundantly, far more, far above than anything we could ever think, imagine, or understand. The table is set. No need to fret. An experience awaits that you won't forget. You know, King David had some great, great testimonies. He had some moments of green pastures and still waters, great moments. And he had some moments of deep darkness, all his testimony. But his testimony here in Psalm 23 is that the Lord was with him through all of that. That is his primary testimony. God, you've been with me through it all. In fact, here's how he put it in Psalm 37, 25. He says, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Your cup may be overflowing with some things that you may be taking for granted. I want you to think about it. And then ask yourself, what is your testimony? Is your testimony that the Lord is your shepherd? That's mine. Is your testimony that he makes you lie down in green pastures, that he leads you beside still waters? Is that your testimony? That's mine. Is it your testimony that he has restored your soul, that he leads you in those moments when you got off the path of righteousness, he brought you back and reset you and reestablished a relationship with you? Is that your testimony? Is mine. Is it your testimony that when you walked through those valleys of deep darkness, those moments when you were uncertain, unclear, but you didn't turn back, the Lord encouraged you to keep going, to get through it, and that he was with you? Is that your testimony? It's mine. And is it your testimony that there's a table set in the presence of your enemies, despite all that's been going on, the Lord continue to feed you, to anoint you, to pour into you, to encourage you. Is that your testimony? It's mine. The table is set. 
No need to fret. An experience awaits that you won't forget. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we pray for you? We would love to pray for you and your family. Please send us an email to AUMC at AskForUMC.org. Our prayer team is standing by to pray for you and your family. It's time for offering. If you'd like to share a gift uh, with us, please feel free to do so. We have multiple ways to give here at Ashford. They're listed on the screen. Most convenient way to give is electronically via our website. Just go to AskForUMC.org and click the Give button. You can text to give as well. Lord, we thank you for your word that has gone forward. I thank you, Lord, that because it is your word, it never returns void. I pray that those that heard it will receive it and believe it in Jesus' name. Lord, bless the gifts and the givers. Amen. And bless you so much. Thank you for joining us for our virtual service today. If you'd like to join us in our sanctuary, we would love for you to come and visit with us. We're at 2201 South Derry Ashford Road. We're on the west side of Houston. Our in-sanctuary service begins at 11 o'clock each and every Sunday. We have an outstanding uh, kids ministry. Our kids Zone volunteers are standing by to teach the word of God to your children on their level, age six weeks to 12 years of age. Please come, you and your family, Come and let's worship the Lord together. Well, I send you forth each and every week with three questions. I provide the questions, you know the answers. Who's the head of this church? Jesus. Who is the church? We are. And what are we as the church called to do? We are called to serve. God bless you all. I love you and I'll see you next time.